Hey there, my name is Madhukar and I work for Nutanix. One of the things that I really miss in the last few months since we have been in a lockdown is the ability to go to a local bookstore and just browse through the books. And of course, it's been tough with uh, you know limited going out and all of that. But a few months ago, the local bookstore that I used to visit to sent out an email and said, hey, if you want to still buy books from our local store and you want to sponsor it, we have just created a web application. It's like an e-commerce store. You can go purchase it, which is great because I do want to help out the local businesses. So we started to go and start purchasing books over there. Now, if you're in IT, uh, you are probably responsible for an application like that, whether the end consumer is your employees or it's the end consumer for your entire company. There are certain industries that are seeing a huge surge in demands of people now going online and either making purchases or using the online digital space to do most of their interaction. Now, if you are one of those where you certainly see an increased demand, then I feel you have two options to accommodate for it. Number one, you could go and buy more servers. And in order to do that, you would have to go in and then, of course, uh, rack and stack, configure and all of that. And maybe you don't have that much of time when, when there's a demand. Number two, you could take your existing application and rewrite it to work for the cloud. So if you pick a cloud with, let's say, AWS or something else, you have to work within the norms of their construct, which is EC2, Elastic Load Balancer, CloudFront, and so on. And what I want to do today is to say that there is a th third option. And that third option assumes that you have an application like this. So if you're in my screen right now, as you can see, it's a standard e-commerce application. And it's running on an on-premise cluster, as we call it within Nutanix. And so what we wanted to do is show you the third option where you don't have to rewrite your application but at the same time, when you see a certain surge in demand, you can take this application and burst to cloud within AWS in this case. So there are a couple of assumptions here. Assumption number one is that this is Nutanix platform. So if you're not familiar with it, I would highly urge you to go check out Nutanix.com. Or you can reach out to one of us during chat as well as uh, request a meeting. we will happy to walk you through that. But the assumption is, you are on a Nutanix platform and you are using AHV and you are using Prism Central for manage, managing your infrastructure. So what we're going to show is this is an application that sits on-prem. And within on-prem, there is an application and a web server. There is a database server. And then, of course, there is object storage for your static files. Step one, what we're going to do is to go in and create a cluster on a bare metal on AWS. Step two, we would take the application parts that we have and using a tool called CALM or Cloud Application Lifecycle Management, we would replicate the application and web server twice. Once as an EC2 virtual machine and two as a virtual machine running on AHV, which is a Nutanix technology. Number three, using CALM, and CALM is very much like, uh, if you think about it, an automation tool where you can write out the different action and scripts using Python. And you can even call those from your own Python scripts as well. So number three, we will use CALM as one of the action is to go create an elastic load balancer on AWS. We will connect all of this together and the end state you would see, now you have an application that has certainly more virtual machines and a load balancer so you're able to handle more demand for your application. So let's look at step number one, which is how do we go and create a cluster and connect it back to my on-premise cluster in this case. So what I'm going to do is we will go to something called um, the clusters portal, as we call it. And it's a very simple user interface. As you can see, there's an organization. You can create multiple organizations. I'm going to use one that already exists here. So I click on that, and I see a couple of clusters that have already been created. I am interested in creating one in Oregon because most of my customers are in Oregon or in the West Coast. So I go in and set up a name. 
here I would choose AWS underscore maybe Oregon so that I know that it's on AWS and it's sitting in the Oregon region. In this case, today we have AWS, but coming very shortly, we're also adding Azure as an option. So if you're an Azure customer or an AWS customer, you could choose the bare metal that you want to create a cluster in, in the regions available in AWS and Azure. So in this case, I'm gonna choose Oregon here. For networking, because I've added my AWS account here, it is already picking up all the VPCs that it can detect from my account. I can choose to pick one, or I could create a new one. I'm gonna leave it to the one that we currently have since the network is all configured. Next, when I hit next, it gives me the option of choosing the bare metal type. And as you can see, the Z1D metal has 48 cores, M5D would have 96 cores, I3N dot metal is 768 and so on. I would choose the number of hosts, redundancy factor of two, and now I'm gonna choose the Nutanix version. So I'm gonna stick with the latest one, which is the 5.18.1.1. And I'm gonna load up uh, Pro on it and not Ultimate. There are differences between the software. And again, you can go look up more on Nutanix.com. And one other thing I need to do is to either create a new SSH key name or select an existing one because uh, this is how I would go in and access the console if I wanted to. So I've created one earlier called AWS Oregon. I choose one, I hit next, and then I hit create. And as soon as I hit create, you would see the task has been created or started in the background. And it takes roughly about 45 minutes or so for an entire cluster to spin up. So I'm gonna fast forward so that the cluster has already been created. And what I'm gonna show you now is that cluster that we just created called AWS underscore Oregon is now connected to my Prism Central, which is the administration UI for all of my Nutanix clusters. And as you can see, I have two different clusters here. The on-premise one is called San Jose underscore primary and the AWS Oregon one that we just created. So if I go into over here and say hardware and pick on clusters, as you can see, these are the two. And if I choose the AWS Oregon one, within the Oregon one, I can go directly into its console, which is called Prism Element. And it gives me some raw details about that cluster. So it's just like creation of an entire Nutanix cluster, either on a HP or a Dell box. In this case, it's a bare metal on AWS cluster. And the reason why we know it's AWS is if you look at the hardware summary, it's picking up AWS dot Z1D metal and so on. So I'm gonna exit out of that. When I come back here, what I wanted to show you is in Prism Central, you can think of a cluster as a collection of resources, which is your virtual machines, your containers, your storage and networking. And just to uh, drive that point home, when I go into virtual infrastructure, and I click on virtual machines, you would see these are all my virtual machines that are currently running on different clusters. Now in this case, everything is running in San Jose primary. And we're gonna leave it at that. I will come back and show later on how easy it is to move these virtual machines to the cluster that we just created on, on AWS. But first, let's look at our application we just talked about and see how we can take that application and without rewriting that application itself, we're gonna burst to the cloud and we're gonna modernize our application. So I am in the calm user interface, which we talked about a little bit earlier, which is cloud application lifecycle management. And it has this notion of blueprints. A blueprint defines what exactly are the steps you want that script to do. And then each of these scripts have what I would say uh, action. And these action then define what you want to do over there. So for example, this is my current application and uh, my application is called Oscar. And because it's running on our own virtualization technology, it's called AHV. I have named it Oscar underscore AHV. It's talking to a Postgres SQL database, which is also on a virtual machine. 
And for all the static files, we are serving from object storage, which is also very similar to S3, uh, but this is part of Nutanix portfolio. So this is the application that we currently have. Now, as I was saying earlier, the end state of this application that I want to be able to do is to take this application and as you can see, the objects and the Postgres database stays as is, but we create two more virtual machines, one on EC2 and one on AHV, but on the cluster that we just created. And within this COM script, we also want to spin up the AWS Elastic Load Balancer and then connect all of this together. So in order to come to this end state from the previous state that we just talked about, all I do is I go to this blueprint where I have created the different steps and I go to manage and here's a task called burst to cloud. If I want to see what this task does, I could go deeper into it. So all I have to do is to hit this play button and it says, are you sure you want to burst to cloud? And of course, because this involves going creation of virtual machines, copying over installation of the packages, and setting up credentials, all of that, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for this specific blueprint. So I'm just gonna fast forward this because I've already done this in the past. So right now I'm not gonna hit run, I will just hit cancel. But the end state, when I click on it, you would see is if I go back to the application and then go to the end state version of this, here's the link of that application now. So if I say, click, in a new window, you should be able to see that now this application is running on an AWS URL. I have, of course, not attached an external IP to it because it's an uh, you know it's a demo. But you would see this is an application that is now have expanded or burst to the cloud. So just to recap, there were a couple of things we did. We created a cluster. Then we took an existing application and then we connected the cluster to our on-prem. We created two more virtual machines, one on EC2, one on AHV. And then finally we created an elastic load balancer and connected all of this. And this is the end state of the application. So what we just saw was bursting to the cloud or modernizing your application without rewriting the application. At no point we touched the application, which is in this case written entirely in Django. Now let's say you have another use case, and that use case is you want to be able to take your existing virtual machines that we talked about earlier, and then move them over from San Jose primary to the AWS cluster that we created. In order to do that, it's also very straightforward within Prism Central. All I do is I have created these recovery plans, which includes a source and a target, and the switch on series of what happens when we do a failover. So let me show you what that looks like. If I click on this, as you can see, uh, there's certain thing that's gonna happen as soon as, as I hit the update button here. So let's say if I want to update it, what it shows me, this is the name of the recovery plan. It tells me the power on sequence. And when I hit next, it tells me that it's gonna take this virtual network that I've created on my on-prem and replicate it all over so it maintains the IP address and all of that on the end state as well. So what I'm gonna do now is just say, perform a failover. And it says, okay, where do you wanna do a failover from and to? So my source is San Jose Primary, my target is AWS Oregon, and I hit failover. Now I've got to say that when I do this, because it's a demo instance, we will see some warnings, which is related to licensing, but that's fine. We will just ignore that because I'm in a trial version and it should go accordingly after a few minutes. So now what we are seeing is it's, it's the reason why it's saying it's red is because it failed to validate the license, but it is still performing the overall failovers. And the way we know is after a few minutes, what we would see, and I will show you what the end state looks like in a bit, you would see all the virtual machines that were running on the on-premise cluster is now running 
on the AWS base cluster that we just created. So I'm going to exit out of this. And if I now go here and click on virtual machines and VMs here, as you could see, it is now moved over to AWS Oregon. And in a few seconds, you would see that it's going to be switched on as well. So just to recap then, we saw a few different use cases here. One, you can take your existing virtual machines and the application setting on those and the workloads and move them over to AWS cluster when you want it. You can back, move them back when you want it to as well. Number two, you took an existing application and we modernized it and we burst to the cloud. One other thing I do want to call out is that uh, because we're using bare metal within AWS, what you could also do is you could potentially be incurring charges when your cluster is running on AWS and you're not really utilizing the full resources. What we have been able to do is that when you do create that cluster, you also have the ability to go in and say, I am not going to be using my cluster for the next eight hours or next few days, whatever it is. And there is a hibernate button. So this cluster that you see is hibernated and you are not being charged for the bare metal because this is in hibernate mode. Now, because it's in hibernate doesn't mean that you are, um, uh, you know, you would lose all the state of your application. When you hit the hibernate button, we actually store it inside of S3. And when you hit the resume button, you would get back all of that state. So this is a cost saving feature here. One last thing I would say is the demo that I just walked through. You could do it on your own as well. All you have to go to go to do is go to Nutanix.com, hit the test drive button that you would see on the top. And then when you come in here, just click on build a hybrid cloud, put in your email address, sign up, and you would get the exact same cluster that I was just showing through as a demo. And with that, uh, hopefully you've learned something useful about hybrid cloud and how to take your existing application and modernize and move to the cloud without a rewrite. Thank you.